Hey folks, it's Patriot Nurse. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, the difference that a year and some odd makes. And I want to go over with you some of the lessons that we've seen as a result of all of the health pandemonium over the past few years and kind of recap how the wisdom and the intuition of our ancestors gave us the answers to all of these questions and how we can apply these lessons from the past today. If you needed any further reinforcement that a postmodern worldview informed on pathological egalitarianism is an utter failure, look at the past couple of years. When you look, particularly when it comes to families, children whose education has historically been outsourced to the state over the past 60 plus years, this model of two parents work to saddle themselves with debt, to purchase stuff they don't need, and outsource the development of their children's minds to a communist entity that is supposed to have their children's best interests at heart, that completely fell through this year. And people over the past couple years have really started to look around and see, whereas their children who have been engaged in remote learning, children who have been trying to go back to school, to public schools in many cases. These kids are lagging very, very far behind. In the state of Tennessee this year, in Shelby County, which is one of the crookedest counties in all of Tennessee, Shelby County's teachers unions, I think, are basically lobbying that there be no standards whatsoever, enforced testing standards, uh, because the outcomes are expected to be so poor for Shelby County's children. This is Memphis area, so Memphis being the the state of affairs, what it, what it is. The outcomes are so poor with children's learning over the past three years. I don't know that this generation is going to make it up. And I think ultimately what we're going to see is that children who were taken out and homeschooled during this time are going to significantly outperform their peers. And really this reinforces what we know to be true, that traditional roles in families operate best because that's how we got here in the first place. The human species is adapted for the most part to have the woman be the primary caregiver for the children and also the primary early childhood educator for the children. And that's not something that the past 40 years of women have been very comfortable with in many cases. And this is an utter failure on the part of our culture and on the part of really feminism as a model. And so some people would say, oh, it's easy for you to say that, Patriot Nurse, like you as a whatever, like a liberated woman doing these things. Listen, like my entire life, I never wanted to be a career woman. I never wanted to, that that was never what was my driving focus. You know, I always value traditional values. I stew that, still do value traditional values. And a family and supporting of the family is something that I believe that the role of godly women is best suited for. Not to say that we don't have other, obviously, pursuits that are fulfilling and that are are stretching to the mind that help to actualize our fullest potential. But when you have children, that fundamentally changes the calculus. And so I think what we're seeing now is that it doesn't work when you've got two parents who are working themselves to the bone and then sticking their children in front of the screen all day, expecting things to turn out well, it just doesn't work. And so over the past couple of years with the pandemic, people have seen this doesn't work. And now these chickens are going to come home to roost, but they're not going to come home to roost necessarily in the immediate term. This is going to be felt when these children who are, who were in preschool, kindergarten and early, early grammar school, when these kids start to get into high school and start to look into launching from the nest, hopefully, and then getting jobs for themselves, there's going to be a significant gulf between children who were homeschooled, children who had proper schooling throughout the formative years of their childhood, and kids who did remote learning that didn't work, or kids who, who, didn't, who didn't have the benefit of a care provider nurturing them along the way. And I think we're going to see this in more than just scholastic achievement. We're definitely going to see this as, as it relates directly to emotional development and particularly to empathy. There's no way to tell what the long-term effects are of systemic and chronic masking on children and on their facial recognition and on their empathy and their social cueing because a large percentage of a child's ability early on to cue off their surroundings is to do facial recognition. Babies are primed to see this, particularly girl children. Girl babies spend more time doing facial eye contact, 
girl babies as compared to boy babies, babies will spend longer time maintaining sustained eye contact in early neonatal periods and in their early childhood development than boy babies do. Boy babies will track moving objects more, but girl babies need face time. So this is going to definitely impact our children. And I think that the effects of all of the changes that we've seen since this pandemic, pandemic started are going to really be felt within the next 10 years. And they're going to be the next generation's cross to bear, ironically. So of the lessons that we've seen from the past, mothers and their critical role in nurturing and sustaining children, particularly in the early parts of life, but also their continued development, their moral development, their social development, and their scholastic achievements are heightened by a primary caregiver who is engaged with them and a mother. And so the old school ways of doing things where women were focused on building their homes and not necessarily to not necessarily their career, but definitely not placing the career above the home, I think we're gonna see that that's really ultimately what's gonna create winners in the future for families. Another thing that we've seen, the lessons from the past, is that freedom and independence and not being not having your paycheck have to go through multiple layers of being approved. That that freedom mindset and that choosing a job with lack of regulation and lack of oversight is a, is a good recipe for success. Unfortunately, I was on the phone with a friend talking about this just a little bit ago. If I was giving advice to people right now as to what careers to go into, healthcare is the last one. And I'm sorry to say it, but I would not encourage people to go into nursing. I would not encourage people to go into healthcare in any way, shape or form because it is not a freedom minded community. It is a community of petty tyrants, unfortunately. Not everybody, not everybody, but you need only look to the face of Dr. Fauci um, and the medical industrial complex to see that the heart of America's workforce has been thoroughly gutted and corrupted. And so these principles about choosing occupations, choosing jobs, choosing careers that allow you to function freely and that allow you to be your own boss, to pursue, pursue entrepreneurship for yourself, those are the things I think that have suited people best. People who could write their own ticket, who could make their own hours, who could set their own policies and protocols and didn't have to listen to places. Places that honored freedom and places that allowed people to function as they were intended with minimum government oversight and impediments. Those are the places whose economies have done best overall. This is just solid lessons from the past and commonsensical things. You'd think people would get it, but they don't. One thing I want to touch on just briefly here. The change that I've seen in the healthcare field, because I kind of just threw something down there, it was mildly inflammatory, like, oh, I would not tell people to go into healthcare right now. I really wouldn't, and I'll tell you why. This industry, A, is heavily regulated. B, it is staffed by a lot of pathological do-gooders. And when I say pathological do-gooders, I'm talking about people who have some kind of inner codependency and turmoil, and the way that they fix their inner codependency is to get a, get a a level of control over other people with a benevolent facade. And medicine is about one of the best ways to do that. And I've talked about this before in some of my previous videos about different types of people who go into healthcare. You got people who go in who are good hearted and they typically don't tend to last long. They get burnt out because there are other people in the healthcare industry, particularly in nursing, and they are power hungry. They are, e they are ego tripping, maniacal, pathological do-gooders. And the pathological do-gooders tend to be exceptionally naive when it comes to history and socioeconomic issues. And they love to tell other people what to do. They, they get a hard on through power and they love control. And so they will choose medicine as a way to benevolently cloak their control needs in something that seems to be for the common and greater good. That, it, that is not going to stop anytime soon. And so, on one hand, while I think it's good for people to get these knowledge, this knowledge and skill set that comes with having a healthcare background, it comes at a heavy price. Your autonomy and poor working conditions and having to shore up your own self-respect day to day, that is, that's a challenging thing. So just the things that we covered here, the lessons from the past, 
modern feminism in the sense of rabid egalitarianism where a woman can do everything that a man can do and a man can do everything a woman can do. It, it, that's nonsense. <laughs> that's nonsense. It's nonsense. When we divorce women from their natural role as nurturers and as caregivers and as supportive creative agents in building a home and in building the legacy of the family, when we take that away from women, we're gutting women and we're crippling families and in particular penalizing children. I'm not saying this as, as some kind of uh, like blanket criticism of people who are trying to work to, for instance, mother and father working to get themselves out of debt, something like that. But it does, it does bear considering what has happened fundamentally to our economy where we have deemed stuff of such import that people are willing to mortgage their future and their children's future in order to, to pay for things. Like if we ask ourselves the question, you know, we're saving up for, I don't know, like a week in Disneyland or whatever. Well, how much time did that take mom out of the home in the day to day to pay for a vacation that is going to be stressful and may or may not yield fruit at the end of things. There's just a lot of rethinking that has to get, get done, I think. And we have to evaluate what's important. So one of the things I talked about in my newsletter this month for my $5 and above Patreon supporters is asking people questions. What are your core values? And reflecting back on this past, past two years, we've had to really challenge ourselves with what our core values are and how do we live them and what does that look like each day? And if we're not living up to our core values, if we're engaged in a cycle of negative thoughts and of activities that are not reinforcing these core values in, our, in ourselves and our ability to actualize them, then what needs to shift? What needs to change so that we can actualize our core values and we can live up to our core values? My core values, just like off the top of my head, freedom, that's part one, and, and submission only to God. And, and government only as a necessary evil in so far as it safeguards the rights of man, not, not as some kind of vehicle for oppressing people's rights and putting people in line like a bunch of cattle. The lessons that our founders warned us with, we're still dealing with these today. And the traditional ways in many ways are best so we'll see in the days to come how this works out. I hope it was helpful for you all today. If you did enjoy the video, I hope you'll subscribe to me here on YouTube, Patriot Nurse. You can also support me on Patreon, Subscribestar, Cryptocurrency, and PayPal. I have links below. You want some valuable lessons? Get trained in skill sets that are going to pay dividends for your family. I offer online courses that you can reference in my description box below, online courses. And also I teach my in-person classes. Knoxville sold out. Atlanta's coming up. Columbus, Ohio. Jacksonville, Florida. Denver, Colorado, Texas is coming up, and um, Charlotte, North Carolina. There's lots of places I'm going this year for 2022, folks, so make sure you check that out at the website, thepatriotnurse.com. Hope you have a very, very blessed weekend, guys. May the Lord bless you and keep you all. For now, it's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.